This is Pastor Wade Butler exploring new ways of thinking and old ways of believing. All right. The Athanasian Creed was born out of a bitter fight in the early church over whether Jesus was truly God or whether Jesus only appeared to be a man. There were two bishops in around 300 A.D., that had two completely different ideas. One of them was Bishop Athanasius. Bishop Athanasius said that Jesus is both God and man at the same time, as we read in the Athanasian Creed. Arius was another bishop who said that God could not become flesh, that if God ever became flesh, then God would be defiled because flesh itself is defiled. And therefore, Jesus only appeared to have flesh to show us the way to get to God. That he only appeared to be conceived by the Holy Spirit. That he only appeared to be born of a virgin. That he only appeared to walk around. He only appeared to be crucified. But in fact, was always just God appearing as a man. Bishop Arius also said that since God can be God only alone, that God created Jesus, that he created the Son, and that the Son was God the Father's first creation. Well, as you can see, these two bishops did not get along. They both had tremendous followings in the church. Many, many hundreds of thousands followed Bishop Arius, and many followed Bishop Athanasius. So Constantine, who was the emperor at the time, realized that this was going to divide his empire. And in 325 A.D., he said, I want all of you people to get here. He got all the bishops, put them in, put them in Nicaea, and he said, don't come out until you have this ironed out. Don't come out without a creed, and I mean it, don't come out without it. And so the bishops began to work on the creed, and in the end, Bishop Athanasius won. And the church voted, the bishops voted, that day, what we just read. Over 1,700 years ago, they voted that creed into existence that we just read. And then to make sure that it would forever be solid, they said, you must believe it or be damned. And then they, at the end, you must believe it or be damned. And in the middle, you must believe it or be damned. (laughs) Just to make sure that you understand that this is the true Christian religion. Since this is Holy Trinity, I want to explain, to my best ability, the Trinity to you. The Trinity, many pastors and many theologians call a mystery, something we could never understand. I'm not going to claim to understand it, because I don't know how God works, and I certainly don't understand how the God of the universe can do what he does. But I am going to explain what the scriptures have revealed and why we believe in the Trinity and why we refuse to give up this doctrine of the Trinity. The scriptures reveal, which we saw in Genesis in our reading, the scriptures reveal that God the Father spoke and everything was. So God the Father must be God. In our gospel reading, we hear that Jesus said, All authority has been given to me under heaven and earth. Therefore, Jesus also must be God. Jesus said that he was going to send the Holy Spirit who proceeds from himself and the Father. At the beginning of creation, there was a void, and the Spirit hovered over the face of the deep. We're told that through Jesus in John, 
that everything was created by Jesus, for Jesus, and through Jesus. For he is the word of God. So throughout all of the Bible, we have these three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. All God, all co-eternal, co-majestic, co-powerful, always in agreement, one God. But yet, three persons. The Father, uncreated. The Son, begotten by the Father, not created, begotten, not made. Remember that in the Nicene Creed? Begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made. So, we have the Father, who is uncreate, unbegotten. We have the Son, who is begotten of the Father from all worlds, light of light. Then we have the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And so we Christians believe that there is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, all three of them God, co-equal, co-magisterial, co-everything. Equal to each other in everything. Yet, three persons. One God, three persons. And yet, we cannot separate God from the person, nor can we make God into three gods. Three persons, one God. But, we must also believe that Jesus became flesh, and this is very important what I'm telling you now, because the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity I just described, is all out there without a body, without any physical form that we know about. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what happened on Christmas? What happened on Christmas is that God the Son, the person, God the Son, took on human flesh. And when that person of the Trinity, in agreement with the Father and the Holy Spirit, the angel announced to Mary what was going to happen, and she said, as, as you have said, let it be to me. And the Holy Spirit caused the Son to merge with flesh for us and for our salvation was made man. We could not reach to God. We couldn't become Trinity. How could we become such a thing? And yet we had fallen out of God's pleasure by consuming of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we had fallen out of his pleasure completely. Something had to be done because he had decreed the soul that sins it shall die. And all of us have sinned. So we were all scheduled for curtain. Not only here, but eternally also. Until in the confines of the Trinity, the Son was given by the Father to come into flesh. Now the moment the Son, co-eternal, 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 co-majesty, co-majesty, co-everything, the Son came into flesh and when he became flesh, he became not two, not like here's God, here's man, glued together. He became one person, one Christ, God and man for you and me. And insofar as he was a man, he was unequal to the Father. Insofar as he was a man, he had to answer to the Father. He prayed to the Father. He begged the Father to let that cup pass from him of the crucifixion and, and awful death. Insofar as him being a man, he was subservient to the Father and said, I only do what my Father tells me. 
insofar as he was human, he was subservient to the Father. Insofar as he is divine, co-eternal, co-majesty. But for a while, he tucked his divinity into flesh. One time we see, once we see, on the Mount of Transfiguration, when the glory came out, there was the divinity shining through the flesh. And the disciples were like this. They couldn't believe it. They fell down even. Because the divine was coming out through the flesh. Then, when Jesus died, we can say truly, God died. According to his flesh. And he was one person, God and man. God died. I never, ever see a crucifix without remembering it took this to save me. Wade Butler, sinner. It took the death of God, man, for me. Because all the wrath of God fell on him. And he was willing to take it. And being God, he could take it. And when he decided enough was enough, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And our sins were paid for. And he gave up the ghost. And even the soldier that was standing there had to say, this was God. Who dies like that? The sun was dark and the earth was quaking. Who dies like that? Decides, it is finished. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Boom, and the sun goes back to the fog. But then, friends, something very great happened. <laughs> God didn't just lay, like our scripture says, he didn't just let the, his Holy One suffer decay. Instead, the Son went down to hell, took the keys away from the devil, who started the whole mess to begin with, picked up his body again, put hu humanity inside divinity, and is now forever a God-man. We have forever an advocate with us before the Father. The Father, the Spirit, and the Son. The Son knows what it's like to be a human being. The Son knows what it's like to walk on the ground. He knows what it's like to be baptized. He knows what it's like to be hungry, to be thirsty. He knows what it's like to be in pain. He knows what it's like to be sorrowful. He knows what it's like to cry at the tomb of Lazarus. He knows, he knows all of it. Because he came here and found out. And so now, picking up the human flesh and going ascending into heaven, the Trinity now dwells in a body. And St. Paul says, all the Godhead dwells in Jesus. It's no wonder that Martin Luther said, the only God I care about has hair on his legs. Because the only God that matters to us is the God who came flesh. The Trinity where the Son came, became flesh for us. And this we must believe. Because if we don't believe this, then there, we believe the wrong thing. And if we believe the wrong thing, we will be condemned. What I have explained to you tonight is within my greatest power, with my right mind, to explain how the Trinity became human in the Son, and we have God on our side in flesh forever. And because he took humanity up into himself, his body can be right here in just a few minutes. And it's not just some remembrance of his body. His body's here because he's God, and he can put his body anywhere he wants. 
And he said he would put it in with and under that bread and wine so that we can eat God. 